Hi guys and girls and welcome to Everything in Middle Earth and today we are back with another Rings of Power episode review. We start the episode with Mount Doom. We see its violent nature and then we transition to Mount Doom on a map. And the black rot that was spreading over the trees in Eregion in the previous episode is spreading all over the map until it reaches Kazakh Doom. We get a fly-in POV shot into Kazakh Doom and we get to see the broader scale of it, including Greenland and marketplaces. The scenes and characters in Kazakh Doom in the last season were one of the positives of the show, so hopefully they'll continue that. It is interesting to see actually greenery within Kazakh Doom. It's a new thing that we are being shown and it, it is interesting. We then see Disa and Durin shopping. Money is low in Moria and so they have to watch what they are buying. We find out that Durin's been outcasted and Deesa's sticking by him. Deesa tries to advise Durin to seek an audience with his father, but as he's talking, she senses the rocks rumbling. Then, part of the rocks of Kazakh Doom start to fall and break. It was funny just seeing Durin rugby tackle Deesa. Surely that will do her more harm. They don't even move that far from the original spot and it's not as if he dived on top of it. He's literally next to her. They then pick themselves up and notice the lights going out in Kazakh Doom. All is not well there. We are now with Galadriel and she's planting some seeds under her brother's statue. We're actually seeing a kind side of Galadriel. Although her brother would be disgusted with her because she didn't tell anyone about Sauron when she found out. She's then joined by Calabrimbor. He's had an unexpected visitor. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Galadriel then has a panic attack as Halbrand is talking to her in her mind. He has the power to control the trees and as they are wrapping around Calabrimbor and choking him, Calabrimbor is quoting three rings for Alvin Kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for for mortal men doomed to die. And just like that, she knows Sauron's plan, and Calabrimbor dies. But wait, Galadriel snaps out of it, and we reveal that she was dreaming, or she was having a vision. The acting by Galadriel during this scene is just awful. She lets out random moans and groans, and her facial expressions imply that she needs a long overdue shit. I do like how she's getting the blame, though, for causing all of this. She needs to be accountable. Now, this part really annoyed me. So, after Galadriel snaps out of her vision, we are with Gilgalad and his commanders. They discuss how best to attack Adar, and Gilglad asks about the whereabouts of Sauron. And one of the commanders replies, their spies last seen him heading into Mordor. Okay, so Sauron's done a lot of moving since then. Why haven't they tracked his whereabouts? Especially when he was in Mordor, where they were located. Why didn't they keep a watch of him? Since we've established that they already have a spy network, why didn't anyone see Halbrand entering Eregion? That's a major flaw. He's the most wanted being alive, and you luckily know what he looks like, and you already have an eye on him up until Mordor. The times aren't making sense either. So, at the end of Season 1, Halbrand is in Mordor, and Gladwell's still not told anyone about Sauron, apart from Alrond. So, how would they have a spy network tracking him at this point? So, they already know Sauron's plan apparently. He's going to overthrow Adar. How do they know this? The dialogue in this scene is just awful. Here's a quote for you. We may be able to crush two spiders with one boot. Wow. So Gladwell suggests to attack Mordor via the Anduin. Without no discussion, they just agree and then they leave the council. But as everyone is leaving, including Gladwell, Gilglad pulls her up and says she's troubled. I love how Gladwell wasn't going to tell Gilgalad about the vision. You've legit had a glimpse of the enemy's plan, and yet you still say nothing. But Gilgalad gets her talking, and she suspects that Sauron is on the move, and that Calabrimbor is his target. So instead of acting on this, Gilgalad just talks her down. Great work, High King. She then touches the ring again, and Halbrand appears. Now knowing that the ring and Halbrand are linked, why would you still want to keep the ring? Knowing that he can manipulate you from that, he's giving you visions. It just doesn't make sense. And so she states to Gilgalad that she's worried about Calabrimbor, and she can see visions. She's adamant 
that Calla Brimbor is at risk. But Gilgalad just won't have it. She openly declares that she wants to fight Sauron. And I mean legit, she wants to fight her with her bare hands. And she says she's the only one who can slay him. Well, Waldrig has actually battered Sauron and has done more for the cause than yourself, Gladriel. And she realises that she's not powerful enough and so she wants to go with other elves. In Eregion, Calabrimbor has rejected Halbrand's entry, and so he's sent his apprentice to do his dirty work, and Halbrand just refuses to go. He just stays there. But hold up, what the actual fuck? Calabrimbor has refused entry of Halbrand because he's promised Gladriel he won't have any dealings with him. Did he not question why he can't have any dealings with him? And then why wouldn't she tell him that he's Sauron just in case he came back? Or if he does know it is Sauron, why isn't he raising the alarm? Why isn't he forcefully kicking Halbrand out straight away instead of giving him a choice. The fault lies with Galadriel because if she would have told Calabrimbor that Halbrand was Sauron, we wouldn't have got any of this. And I mean tells him straight away, not in a handwritten letter. But we've got a reason for why Calabrimbor doesn't know, apparently. We see that the messengers never got to Calabrimbor. Back in Rune, we have a new location, Karas Geyer. I probably said that wrong. I do apologise. And this is the base for not Saruman, who is leading a cult of moth women. Now, he can't legally be called Saruman, so the creative geniuses at Amazon have called him the Dark Wizard. And I wonder who he looks like. One of his disciples slits their hand, and Saruman waves his staff around, and Eminem appears. She tells him about Sauron's plans, because everyone knows his plans apparently, and Saruman brings up not Gandalf, and the two halflings. This is the first time in the show that they've been called halflings, which I thought was interesting. He wants to use Gandalf and to control him. One of his spies then return, and he proposes a plan using the Harfoots as a way of capturing Gandalf, and he agrees to the plan. Gandalf and the crew are setting up for future scenes. They are talking about what to call Gandalf. I wonder what name they'll settle on. They are all hungry, and they want Gandalf to fix this. Gandalf hears the pounding of hoofs, and it's the evil trackers. So, they pack up and hide. Have you seen the two towers? Well, we get another call back. Do you remember when Sam and Frodo hid under the cloak outside of the Black Gates? We've got that again. So Poppy, Nori and Gandalf, I don't know how I know the other two names, they're hiding in the cloak as the raiders are sprawling around, they're looking for them. And then as soon as the raiders stop a few feet away from them and declare that they're still going to be looking, they burst out from the hiding place and start talking at a normal volume. Surely they would have been heard. They didn't even wait 10 minutes. They just burst out and they mention and come up with the beautiful quote again, no one goes off trail and no one wanders alone. Well, what about all those crippled Harfoots she left behind? And so, they go off trail. In Kazakh Doom, the earthquake is ruining food supplies. And talk amongst the folk is that bad things are happening because Alron visited them. Like the SS that she is, Deesa quashes these talks and plans to speak to King Durin. In Durin's Hall, we are introduced to Narvi. Narvi explains that they can't grow crops because of the lack of light. And just as he's about to state a solution, Deesa interrupts him, pulls him up on his failures. What a nice way to introduce the character. And so she says she's the one to fix it. And so she starts singing, and she fails. Durin then lectures her and says the bond is broken between them. The dwarfs in the room are looking concerned and rebellion is on the rise. King Durin then asks for a private word with Deesa. He wants to see his son, and wants him to apologise to him. So they argue some more, and she just talks him down. She forgets her position. How is she allowed to do this? She blames him for the downfall, and he just takes it. No arguing back. We get some more shots of Durin working underground. He's trying to mine the rocks, and he's chatting away to his fellow dwarfs. Then... It turns ugly. The dwarfs start to blame Durin and his father for the troubles. And one dwarf then slaps him. Durin threatens to bite off his fingers. And so he gets pushed over and does nothing. In their own dinner hall, Deesa and Durin are arguing over food. 
She wants him to apologise to the king, but he refuses. The pressed Alrond is at work, where he is joined by Galadriel, and like a bad thought entering the room, everyone leaves as soon as Galadriel is seen. She says to Alrond that she fears Sauron is in a region. She says it so placidly as well. She should be more urgent. Her mission is to form a small party to keep Calabrimbor safe and she asks for Alron's permission. How does she plan on keeping him safe when he's supposedly already there in Eregion? Alrond isn't having any of it and so she forcefully stops him from working so that he can listen to her. Apparently Gilgalad won't let Gladrul go without Alrond because he's afraid that Sauron might deceive her. But if he's taking the threat seriously, then why isn't he sending out a full force rather than a petty party? Alron reminds us that she doesn't like to listen to orders and she does what she wants. Finally, he's grown a pair, but she keeps on touching him to make him listen and she keeps having flashbacks of happy moments with Halbrand as if she was in love. And Alron reminds Gladwell that by having the rings, she is falling for Sauron's plan, and so he kicks her out. This was a very good scene for Alrond. He came across as more imposing and stood his ground, finally. He then goes up to meet with Kiridan, who is having a shave. I did not expect to see that, and so they're talking about the rings again, and how beautiful they are, and how bad they are. Kiridan works his charm and puts his hand in the water, which attracts a load of fish and explains why the rings need to be with them instead of Sauron. They want to use them for good, and that Gladrul is right, and Alrond is wrong. We have more shots of the Harfoots, and Gandalf's wandering around, dehydrated. The Harfoots are just on a rug, they can't be bothered to walk, and so Gandalf collapses. And what a coincidence! They find a well in the middle of Rune, literally Poppy knows where it is, looks over a cliff, and it's there. And they are saved. They fetch a bucket of water and Gandalf is relieved. As Gandalf regains his strength, he sees a staff on the floor, randomly. I wonder what that could mean. We then see the Tuscan Raiders have found them and they go full attack mode. And so Gandalf starts to use some magic and he causes a massive fucking twister. He's lost complete control. In all the chaos and loud noises, he manages to hear the Harfoots and they get sucked off into the land of Oz. Calabrimpo is back at work. He's with his new apprentice and he's created a piece of work which includes Mithril that only allows you to see the carvings in moonlight. His apprentice says that Sauron's cold and asks if he can come inside. Halbrand then manipulates the weather to make it rain and we have the weak Calabrimbo with his ridiculous umbrella wandering to Halbrand. He then finally threatens to kick him out by force but Halbrand being the master deceiver brings up Galadriel and Calabrimbo is hooked. Halbrand mentions the rings and Calabrimbo is concerned about them. I just love to see the conversation go down between Galadriel and Calabrimbo because she hasn't explained anything about Sauron to him. Like Calabrimbo just goes along with it. No questions asked. Why can't he be allowed in? No. No questions. And why does Halbrand just start to manipulate Calabrimbo so openly and poorly as well, saying the High King has screwed Calabrimbo over. He's just saying these words out loud, he's not trying to be sneaky about it. And just like that, Calabrimbo does a 180 and lets Halbrand into his quarters. Calabrimbo wants to know if the rings worked and they have a nice chit chat about it. Halbrand says yes they have, they are beautiful and Calabrimbo cries with joy. We're going to be getting a lot more crying Calabrimbo back with Gilgalad and Gladwell. He's commanded her to go to a region with a party. Because Alron has convinced him, he steps out into frame and Gladwell is grateful until she finds out that she's not in charge. It's Alrond who's the new boss. Now, from the performance, I couldn't tell if she's happy, sad, angry about this, just no expression. We then end the episode in Moria. Durin has been given an invitation by Calabrimbor to go to a region. 
And so the episode ends. So, guys and girls, there we have it. The episode two of The Rings of Power. I thought it was a slight improvement on episode one. Alron finally grew a pair. Calabrimbor's so weak and easily deceived. Some of the dialogue in this show is awful, especially with the Harfoots. I think Kiridan's probably been the best part of both episodes. Right, guys and girls, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, and peace.